Hi everyone, today, I'm sure uh, many of you have been waiting for this day, I'll finally be talking about the T-34 tank. Of course, uh, can't cover the whole thing in one video, so today I'm going to talk about one very specific question regarding the T-34 tank. This question was asked by a Reddit user 12487672020 of the subreddit War College, who asks, I recently saw somebody claim that the Soviet forces at the Battle of Halkingol were equipped with prototypes of the T-34. He quotes Anthony Beaver's book, The Second World War, which says, His tanks included T-26s, which had been used in the Spanish Civil War to support the Republicans, and much faster prototypes of what later became the T-34. Now, this is not an unreasonable assumption to make. Small wars are often used to test tactics and doctrine. The Spanish Civil War, of course, was famously used by both the USSR and Nazi Germany to test their tanks, and uh, the USSR made quite a number of very interesting conclusions, which I talked about in a video with Military History Visualized. The Winter War uh, between the USSR and Finland was also used to test tanks, most notably the KV-1 tank, KV-2 tank, uh, competitors of the KV-1 such as the T-100 and the SNK, and the SU-100 Y prototype. So it stands to reason that the Battle of Halkengol could have been used to test T-34 prototypes. The question is, did it actually? Just as some background, a quick overview of T-34 prototypes. Uh, the family began with the BT-20 tank, which was envisioned in 1938, but it was never built. Uh, this tank was succeeded by the A-20 and the tracked A-20 or the A-20G, which was later renamed to A-32. The Battle of Cock and Goal was fought from May 11, 1939 to September 16th of 1939. As of May 11th of 1939, the A-20 was just a pile of armor plates, assembly had not even begun yet. Uh, the A-20 was capable of driving only as of May 26th, but this was still just a chassis. The armament wasn't installed, it wasn't fully assembled, it was nowhere even close to a fully combat-ready tank. Uh, final assembly of this tank only finished in July. The A-32 took an even longer time to be finished. Assembly only began in June, and as of July 2nd, it was barely ready to be driven for preliminary trials. Factory trials of both vehicles lasted until August 23rd, 1939, when both of them were taken in for overhaul. At that point, the A-20 had traveled for over 4,000 kilometers, and the A-32 had traveled for over 3,000 kilometers, so both tanks were quite in rough shape. On September 5th, the tanks were delivered to Kubinka. Uh, they were shown to the government on September 22nd, and then on September 23rd, the document was signed to put these two tanks into production. There was, of course, a second prototype of the A-32 built. This was essentially a test bed to see if the suspension and the engine could uh, support the addition of thicker armor to make the A-32 into the A-34. Uh, this tank was built with just a 45mm gun. It never received an elevation mechanism or optics. Uh, it was not a combat-ready tank, and nor was it actually ready for battle at the time of uh, the Battle of Hulkin Goal. Uh, this tank was only uh, ready for trials in October, and trials lasted until November, so it was uh, not even remotely close to being finished when the battle was over. As you can see, the A-20 and the A-32 were quite a long way away from any of the fighting uh, against Japan in 1939, and there's no way they could have participated in any of the combat. But, you ask, what about the A-34? These tanks were surely available uh, during the Winter War, and so they could have been tested against Finland, as the KV-1 and the T-100 and SNK were. Uh, this claim is made in several sources, but it's never quite uh, stated where exactly these tanks fought. So the Winter War began on November 30th, 1939, and lasted until March 13th, 1940. Uh, assembly of the A-34 tanks only began in early 1940. Uh, by February 6th, the first A-34 was just capable of passing its breaking in run. It wasn't fully completed. Uh, for example, a gun had not been installed, nor had the optics or the ammunition racks, so of course it couldn't participate in any battles. Uh, the second A-34 prototype was delivered in February 12th in really the same condition. Uh, it was not a fighting machine. Various trials took place between mid-February and mid-March when the two A-34 tanks were saddled up for a drive from Kharkov to Moscow. The tanks drove on their own power, setting out on March 12th and reaching Moscow on March 17th. Uh, there were various trials held around Moscow, namely at the Kubinka Proving Grounds, 
and then the tanks set back on April 2nd and reach their destination on April 10th. Zaloga and Sarsen do make a claim in their book T-34 Medium Tank 1941-1945 to uh, that the T-34 tanks drove by the Mannerheim line on their way back from Moscow to Kharkov, but the route that these tanks took is uh, very well known. These tanks went from Moscow to Serpukhov, to Tula, to Plavsk, to Tsensk, to Aryol, to Kromy, to Fatyash, to Kursk, to Abayan, to Belgorod, and finally returned to Kharkov. It took five days to make the initial trip to Moscow, and it did take eight days slightly longer to make the trip back, but it's definitely nowhere enough time to go all the way up to Finland and then make a return journey. The tanks then remained at Factory 183 to iron out certain components and prepare for T-34 mass production. Uh, there was no point in sending them somewhere far away anymore to prove themselves in battle since the government already approved their release. So why was the KV tank and its family tested but not the T-34? Well, the answer to this is quite simple. When you are sending a prototype into battle, it's not enough to just ship the tank. You have to ship specialists and spare parts because the, the prototype is quite a valuable commodity and it can't be lost all willy-nilly. So in case of the KV, the uh, Kira factory in Leningrad was quite close to the front in Finland, whereas Kharkov was quite far away from both Finland and Halkengol. So it would have been quite a grueling journey uh, for the T-34 prototypes to be sent somewhere far away for very little benefit. Additionally, the KV-1 was a whole new class of tank. It was a breakthrough tank that was supposed to be impervious to uh, really any artillery use at the time. And, well, that was really the case in the Winter War, where no gun that uh, the Finns used was able to harm it. Uh, the T-34, as impressive as its armor was for its time and its class, it was not impervious even to 37mm guns. Uh, so sending it in combat against f Finnish fortifications would have been a, uh, quite a wasteful exercise. However, T-34 prototypes did see combat. The A-20 tank was retained at Kubinka for trials, but uh, during the battle for Moscow in November and December of 1941, the times got quite desperate, so this tank was actually sent to the 22nd Tank Brigade, where it saw battle alongside uh, another rare tank, the AT-50, designed at Factory 174. Uh, unfortunately, the combat uh, history of this tank is not clear, uh, and all that is known is it was lost uh, somewhere near Moscow around that time. If you would like to learn more about the history of the T-34 and its prototypes, uh, there is no better book in the English language than my Designing the T-34, Genesis of the Revolutionary Soviet Tank, uh, available now either from Amazon or direct from the publisher if you prefer a paper copy, or there is actually an ebook copy available. Links in the description below.